Hi guys, Chris Rowland here from Allwood Audubon and today we're going to do a sketch of a great blue heron. Uh, we're going to do it more like I would do a, a field study sketch. I'm, I'm not going to do it uh, the way I did last week's watercolor where I took a lot of time to draw it out and then we, we transferred it uh, over to another sheet of paper. I'm going to do it directly onto the watercolor paper and there'll probably be some some lines here and there that I might not want but like I said this is going to be more like what I would do out in the field if I were doing a sketch of, of the birds. Um, so I'm just going to use a, a number two pencil, regular pencil like uh, we all use. Uh, I do have lots of different kinds of pencils I use for more detailed work, but like I said, I want to do something that everybody can use. So just grab your pencil and some paper and let's get to going. All right, first thing I'm gonna do, actually the first thing I'm gonna do is grab myself a little bit of my eraser. Um, I wanna get a general idea of where I'm gonna put the shape of my bird, uh, my hair, and I'm gonna make him strike him. We talked in, in the song I sang earlier this week about the blue heron striking a fish with its beak. Uh, so I'm gonna put him, we're gonna, we're gonna make him do just that. So I'm going to get an idea of where I'm going to do this real light at first and then I'm going to put him in darker as I go along just to get an idea and I hope you can see this but I'm putting it in just to get an idea of where I want my heron. If I do it light I can change where it is in my picture if I draw it real dark, I'm stuck with that image. And I don't want to be stuck if I don't have to. And uh, that looks about right. All right, so I've got a couple lines in here just to give me some ideas. Now I can start getting some dark in. I want to get the basic shape of my bird um, into my picture. And the basic shape is going to be here. I'm going to put it in the left corner down a little low. You don't want to put your pictures right in the middle. You want to create a nice composition. And that composition is going to be pulling it over this side, uh, creating a little tension. Uh, just makes the picture a little more interesting. And I think I'm going to bring them over just a little more. So I'm going to erase. That's why it's so nice to do this lighter. I'm going to bring them over just a smidge more. Let's, let's curve them in right about here. That's where I want to go. Drop that out. And that's about, should be about right. If I go here. Here we go. I'm just putting in real light lines, getting an idea of where my bill's going to be, and that long snake-like neck. Curve that. Make sure I've got enough room for my body. Yep, that looks about right. All right, so first thing I want to do, I'm going to put this eye in, and those lines might change as we get going, but I'm going to get this eye in here. The eye is always that interesting part. I always like to start with the interesting things that everybody focuses on. People focus on the eyes. Now, I am doing this a little more detailed. If I were doing this out in the field, I'd be sketching fast because uh, birds move fast. Although, when you're doing a blue heron, you're sort of lucky because, like I said, if you get him while it is out looking for prey, you might get it standing like a statue, motionless and patient, just like in the song. Now, I'm doing this a little darker than I normally would because uh, I want you to be able to see it. 
and you can see I'm not getting super detailed. I'm going to take that line out though. It's a little too dark. I'm not getting real detailed, but I want to, I'm doing this fast. I'm not, this is not going to be, this wouldn't be a uh, final picture if I were doing a real detailed picture. And we can get into that as the weeks go along. can show you some of the detail work. That might, uh, be a series that would take us a while. Detailed paintings can take weeks to do. This I want to do real quick. This would be, like I said, this would be a study that I might work a detailed painting from. I want my lines to always go in the direction of those feathers. I don't want to just zigzag it across. I want to have the lines be realistic. And the white feathers curling up here. I'm going to take out a little bit. I've got too, got too dark too fast. And this is the problem with drawing too dark too fast is you can't erase it as well. But I want you to be able to see it. And like I said, this is just more of a field study. So it's not going to be perfect. Bring that bill down here. I'm actually going to have it spear a fish. We'll make this a... Let's do that. We'll make it spear a fish. Trying to keep my arm out of the way. Hopefully you guys can see all this. I have it right at the end of that pointy bill. They wait patiently in the water, and as those fish swim by, they will all of a sudden strike, spear the fish with its beak, and then eat it down. And I'll put in some, I'll put some of this a little darker as we get going. I want to do this real quick. When you're out in the field, sometimes, especially with some of the smaller songbirds, you might only have a few seconds to get the quick idea of the shape of the bird and then you have to draw them later. And that's where a lot of taking photographs outside when you're doing art or helps out as well. It comes that body up. in a little more. Alright. here. Now right through here I'm going to bring in its wing. It has all these wonderful long feathers back here and we'll just sort of hint to those feathers. a 
couple of its primary feathers here. made him a little big. I actually have him going off my page. I wasn't going to do that, but that's the benefit of drawing it out on scrap paper first. And uh, then you can redraw and rearrange it. But if I were out in the field, I wouldn't have time to do that. Like I said, just a quick study. And this is a nice thing to do. Practice just getting used to drawing your birds. Helps you get more familiar with them. Let's get those long legs coming in here. I'll bring that wing down just a little lower. There we go. I hope you guys are doing this at home. Having fun experimenting with your pencil. You can get so many different shades. Get super lights and darks from that pencil. It's just amazing what you can do. I'm going to bring this down just a little lower. Bring that up a little higher. other feathers in on the other side. And I can cut this down just a little bit. So I'm right there, right at the edge. There we go. So we're almost Almost have those general parts. Put that here. Curve that around. My cat is down below us. Super excited about the birds out at the window here. through here be a little shaded. number of different colors on him. This front area is a little, a little whiter underneath. It's a little counter shading. there. Bring that beak down just a little bit. I have to be careful I'm leaning on my paper which I normally don't do and I'm 
getting some of my stuff smeared in a little bit. But uh, yeah, it happens. All right, let's put this leg in. So I'm going to make sure I have my legs where I want them. My one leg's going to come back here, drop down in the water. That should be about right. And then my front leg will be right about there. Or my back leg, not my front leg. Actually, his back leg. Let me sharpen my pencil a little bit. about there, so that's where it's going to be turning. Bring that out just a little further. in here. Put a little action. Now I can clean out these lead lines that I had originally. I moved him over and made him just a little bigger than I was planning on it. And I'm going to lighten some of these lines because that was my original lead line for the feathers, but I made or the wing, but I made that wing a little bigger. There we go. Clean it up just a smidge since we're making it just a little fancier than I might do just for fun out in the field. Oh. We gotta make our fish. That's so oh, here we go. Put a little fish in. Big fish, huh? That's enough. Put that tail back here. Just the hint of it. There we go, got our fish. Let's put a little splash in right through here. Surprise. You can do this in watercolor, you can do it in color pencil. I think I'll, I'll do it in watercolor, seeing as uh, 
It's a water bird. And I got my watercolors here. There we go. Lighten that a smidge. Get that side here. All right, I think we're pretty good here. I'm going to darken. Now I'm going to come back here and just darken up some spots. You can get really dark. You can get pretty dark with your color pencil or your your uh, regular pencil here. To me, this is the best way to learn about the animals that uh, we love is through painting and drawing. I could do this all day. Now I'm just going to put in a little shadow in here and there. I am going to watercolor it, but I'm going to put in my pencil because, like I said, this is more of a field sketch. And when I'm doing a watercolor on a field sketch, it's more of just putting splashes of color just to get that idea of what those colors would be. a little more. I'm going to bring his face. Normally I have my little brush to wipe away my stuff, but like I said, it's more of a study. Now, you could sit here and get that more and more detailed if you want. I'm going to do these legs a little bit. Right there here it's going to be pretty shaded. And definitely back here. A little light's going to shine. Back part of the leg right here. a little thicker right up front. Get 
take some of that out. That leg's a little bit further behind, so it's going to be a little smaller. There we go. I think we're just about ready to watercolor. I'm going to clean some of that up. Need to find these wings back here so we know those. That's the back side. And right here. Lighten that just a little bit. Bring, I'm going to emphasize those tail feathers just a little. darker there, a little more shaded underneath here it's going to be. And some secondary feathering. colors and we'll begin. All right, we're back. Now I have this stuff called Mastic. It's white mask frisket, a liquid frisket that you can use with watercolor. And we're going to experiment. We're going to just play around. Mine's actually almost dried out. But uh, I'm going to put it in areas where I want it white. And then I can erase that afterwards. And we're just going to, we're just going to play, like I said. So I'm going to put a little bit of it here and there. where the light, white of the water we can have a little fun with this picture why not right? what's life if you can't have fun? here and there.
you can get this at Hobby Lobby or you know there again you can get it online for the eye and back here get some white feathers let's see what that does back here Normally I do this with a paintbrush, an old paintbrush, because it'll ruin it if you don't properly take care. And you don't want to do it with a good paintbrush. And I'll put some of those down in here. Clean that up later. All right. I'm going to let that dry and uh, we'll get to painting. Alright, we got that dried out pretty much, and I'm going to pick my watercolor brushes. I'm going to use a big one, bigger one, and maybe my smaller, a little bit here, and we'll have a little bit of fun. Make sure if you're doing your watercolor, you've got good clean water. I usually have two cups, one to rinse and then one to rinse if I really need it clean, a little cleaner. And some paper towel. Um, don't need those, I can get those out of the way. And I have a little piece of paper that I always use to check my colors and, and you can keep that with you as well. I'm going to put that right up there. Put my little one down here. I'm going to mix up a blue, blue gray. And to get that nice blue gray, I'm going to mix some blue and a little bit of brown to gray it out. Not a lot, just a little bit. Blue heron have this nice blue gray color to them. Get a lot of that color made up together. I'm going to get my color made up and then I'm going to start on it. A little bit of brown. Like I said, not a lot, just a little bit. I got it still a little too. And getting there. And more brown in there. Let's see. That's getting there. Ah, 
that's looking more like it. You can always add a little more color to things if you need to. Or dull it down a little bit. Either or. Oh, that looks pretty good. Alright, I'm just going to splash this back here. That looks about right. And like I said, this is just a field study, so I'm just putting, I just want a little color. And if you watch, I can get really thin strokes if I turn my brush sideways, which is what I'm going to do. Just get a little bit of color in there. for the neck. A little bit of my blue, a little bit of brown. Here we go. I can put this in here. some of that with my thinner ones. I'm going to build that up just a smidge. There we go. Now my neck is going to be just a little browner. I want to check out my colors before I put them on. That looks about right. I'm going to put that in here. Add some of that here to the back. That looks pretty good. Let me get my skinny brush. Clean up my big one. I dropped my little one. All right. Let's add just a little bit of my brown back here. Little shadow shading underneath that area. And black's going to be one of the last colors I'm going to bring in. I'll bring in my, which is, if you watched last week, I do a more of a brown with a blue, a little darker. A little more brown. Now I can start getting a little darker. A little more blue. bringing some of that in here and like I said just having a little bit of fun right now the way those feathers would come out just an ever so light touch, and really light touch here. I want to get just get the idea of those feathers into those feathers right through here. Back here, I'm going to start bringing them in a little darker. Just so we know, that area is going to have some, some dark to it. A 
just put some under shadow and just real quick in there just so we get the idea of the impression of those feathers like I said not getting real detailed here we're just doing sort of a study Just having a little bit of fun with it. Now I have this a little grayer than I want it, so I'm going to let that dry a bit and I'm going to bring in some more blue. to what I want. I'll let that dry. While that's drying, I've got that blue. I'm going to get in a little bit of my brown in the legs. Watch there. A little red. That looks about right. Bring that in right down here. some up there just for a little color. And right in there. A little bit. Just a little bit of color. Just a little hint of color through here. Some of that in there. Blot some of that out, let it give it a chance to dry. drying. I'm going to make myself a little darker brown. Check out test my color there. That looks about right. And let's put just a smidge up there. Too dark down there as well. All right, I'm going to start bringing in some of my dark back here. Let's bring some of that in.
put a little more blue in there. More of that true black color, that darker color. start bringing in some more of that blue while that's black's drying. Let's bring some more. Pretty dry. Pretty dry. That's about right. Here you go, not being exact, just having some fun hinting at the three dimensional look of those feathers. Take some of that, a little too much in there. And you can see how all these build together. It's the nice thing about watercolors the transparentness of them coming through. Let's put some of that blue underneath here. Just add a little bit of color. Get that hint of shadow. Bring some more there. build that up a little more as we go. That's looking like fun. Save that for last. A little more of my brown, my blue. So I'm going to use my scrap paper, get some of it off. I'll build it up. I'd rather build it. I like to build it slowly. It makes it, to me, it gives it more of a realistic look. If you put it on too fast, I think it makes your picture look flat. I don't want to flatten it out yet. No, I don't want to flatten it out at all. Get that in there. Shadow through there. back area.
a smidge. All right, we've become uh, just a smidge more than doing that field sketch. Now you can see I'm really smearing my my uh, pencil, but I can clean that up later after we do after we get rid of some of this. I want to make that brown stick out a little more. Just dabble it here and there. I'm going to put a couple different browns in there. Lighter and darker. Mix them together. Just give it a little, little pop right through here. Down. A little more pop right through there, right on the wing, especially the end of that wing. While that's drying, let's play with this water. Let me give it a color here. And with this, we're just going to I'm going to take my brush, I'm going to flick a little bit. If you see it, I'm flicking. Flick it close in the right directions. Just having fun, just flicking it to get the idea of some splashes in there. Same thing right here. I'm pulling my brush back and just flicking. I need a little more paint. I'm having too much fun with that. And you can use some different colors. You can do some darker, some lighter. Let's do some. See what happens. You can go flick happy. Oh, that's fun. There we go. I'm gonna flop that out. All right. And while that's drying. I'm going to work on the yellow of the bill. some lighter yellow, lighten that up with a lot of water.
pull some in here. There we go. Let me just bring a little more orange back in. Alright, let's play with our fish a little bit. Let's get a little yellow in our fish. A little sunfish here. Bring a little green. Hi guys, so when we were painting last night, uh, I ran out of memory. So I know we, we left off right at the water coloring, and uh, I finished putting the rest of the color in. Uh, uh, put in some more detail, a little highlight, made our fish a little smile. Oh man, bummer. Um, <laughs> and then one thing I didn't get to show you was I took my brush, I saturated it with, with uh, watercolor, and I brought it up close and I would just flick the paint onto the picture to just, just play it around, give it a little splash effect. I actually had never done that before. I've seen people do it, and, and it came out pretty, pretty nice. I sort of liked it. So, um, just to recap, one thing I, I did say, I would have had him over a little further towards the right, just a smidge, but um, I drew it directly onto the paper. That's the benefit, if you saw last week's, of drawing your picture out on a separate sheet of paper and then placing it where you want it and transferring it from that piece of paper. But since this was more of like a field study sketch, uh, it, it wasn't as important. But I think it came out pretty good. So uh, I hope you had a great time. I had a great time with you guys. I always have a great time painting and doing stuff at all. With. So come back next week. We'll do another video and have some fun with art and nature. Thanks a lot. We'll see you.